Hi, I'm Isabella Hearn and I've been involved in English language teaching for more than 25 years. I've been involved as a teacher, as a teacher trainer and also as an author. One of the things that has really attracted me to Discover English is the Discover aspect of it. And it's not just Discover English. It goes a lot deeper than English. It's really Discover the World. This is a truly global product. We've got festivals, for example, all around the world. Uh, Japan, the Caribbean, India, We've got short texts and stories and anecdotes from all over the world as well. We've got a little girl who went to Kenya with her family. She climbed up Mount Kilimanjaro and did voluntary work there. We have a little girl called Tilly Smith who, because she had listened in her geography class and actually knew how a tsunami would look. When she was on holiday in Thailand in 2004 with her parents, she actually noticed that there was a tsunami about to happen and because of her, lives were saved. These type of stories that are so often real, true stories, I think give the book an air of authenticity and something for the children to really get excited about. I think when you look at the book, you feel, wow, this world is really exciting and there's so much to experience. I was really lucky as an author when I was writing this book because I was surrounded by children of this age group all the time. And sometimes on playground duty, I'd be sitting there just listening to the way they speak and thinking, OK, we can use this kind of dialogue. Obviously, we're going to have to tailor it to the needs of a particular structure or unit, but we can make it sound completely authentic, which is exactly what we did. Let me give you an example. Hey, Monica. Oh, hi. I'm looking for a card for Ben. It's his birthday on Saturday. Yes, you're right. I never remember birthdays. Now, that's just the kind of thing that kids would say to each other if they were to suddenly meet in a card shop and remember somebody's birthday. So we were really careful to make sure that the language doesn't sound, sound stilted, doesn't sound as though it's been forced, but it's real. And one of the ways that we managed to do this is because in each unit we have a talking tip. Uh, let me give you an example of that. Uh, you're joking. How embarrassing. Phrases like that, that the children could learn, use, enjoy, things like, no way, and come on. So the intonation, the pronunciation, all that could be worked in. And at the same time, they sounded like English kids. They sounded authentic. We've also used authentic songs in the course. Some of them are well known, some of them are extremely popular anyway, but all of them are real songs. Uh, for example, we've got Space Oddity by David Bowie. We've got Help, The Beatles. All the time we've been making sure that the songs fit in with the theme or with a structure or with an aspect of the vocabulary. So yes, they're authentic, but also they're appropriate for what it is we're trying to do. One of my favorite aspects of Discover English is the vocabulary. The vocabulary is really rich. This is the opening page of the unit on music in book two. And as you can see from the picture, it's really motivating. Animals are treated in the same way. This is the opener of unit three in book one. We don't just have 
zoo animals. We have all sorts of different animals that are doing very, very exciting things. We have the squirrel that can water ski. We have the dolphins that paint and the Thai elephant orchestra. All these things are really interesting for growing children to learn about. I also really like the way that grammar's presented in Discover English. It's so clear. It's done in very, very clear graphs like this. Here we have the question form of the present continuous. And there really is no way that the children can make a mistake. So it's great for their self-esteem. It's completely non-threatening. And it's a really good way to learn. It's clear, it's concise. And as I say, there's not an awful lot that can go wrong. Uh, the other thing we do is present grammar through charts and Venn diagrams. And this is also very good for the children who need to learn using their mathematical, logical intelligence. I'm a huge fan of Howard Gardner and of the theory of multiple intelligences. And that, I think, really comes through in the entire course book. One of the fun elements of Discover English is that in each level, there's a cartoon. And the cartoon story runs straight through the book. There's one in the starter level, one in level one, in level two, and in level three. In level two, the cartoon is called Adventure Island. And there's a little character who's probably my favorite in this cartoon, and his name is Nipper the Crab. And Nipper has uh, what we call Nipper's Notes in the student's book, and in the workbook, the activity book, it's transferred into Nipper's blog, where he gives information and the children have to interpret certain language puzzles. This spread has a lot of opportunity for practicing the different intelligences. We have a fun zone. Again, there are puzzles there, all sorts of possibilities for some creative work, artistic work. There are functions as well on this spread, and they're really important because with the functions, the children can actually use authentic language and, and really communicate as English children would. Apart from that, we have fun facts and sometimes we've even managed to put in a joke. Now, writing the jokes was a really difficult task. To find a joke that will work, that will be funny, that is age appropriate and that is linguistically OK for the level is a really difficult task. I have one here from uh, level one. What do ghosts eat? Spooketty. So here the children are having a lot of fun and practicing a lot of language at the same time, which is the great combination, which really is the only way to learn, having fun practicing. <laughs>